Hey guys, even here and we got some big news. Big Remy is back. He popped up finally. He went MIA for a while. He was nowhere to be found. As you guys probably know, he was supposed to guest pose at Pittsburgh Pro, but he didn't show up. People expected him to be there. He never showed up and nobody knew where he was until now. So a couple of minutes ago, he posted an apology video, apologizing to Jim Mannion for not showing up at Pittsburgh and apologizing to all bodybuilding fans. So let's hear Big Remy out. Hey guys, I know I've been absent for a while. First, I would like to apologize to Mr. Jim Mannion, Tyler Mannion, IFPP Pro League for not coming to Pittsburgh Pro. Due to personal reason that I can't go into details about I can't fly to Pittsburgh. It's nothing hurts me more than I know. I missed that event. And uh, I let many people down. Mr. Germani, all the better building fans. I'm really sorry from the bottom of my heart. I think you know all. I'm um, from day one. I started bodybuilding. I try to do my best to be a good guide for any person who need to be a bodybuilder. Maybe I make some mistakes, but I'm a human. And I know in the future I will make some, some mistakes because it's still a human. Uh, I'm really sorry. And I need to explain my apologies, please. Thank you. So there you go guys, basically he apologized in this video to Jim Mannion, to Tyler Mannion, to IBB Pro League, to all the fans, and he says that he wasn't able to make the flight but he cannot disclose the details, the actual reasons for why this happened. But I believe him, I mean, why would he lie? In this video, he does have these puppy eyes that maybe makes you wonder, is he pretending, uh, to? is he trying to look sorry, more sorry than he actually is? And that might be the case, maybe he is not as sorry as he seems in this video, but why would he lie? I mean, I believe his apology was sincere, uh, I believe he just couldn't make it, I don't think he was simply lazy and he didn't wanna travel, I don't think that was the case. I mean, he did get a lot of hit for being the Mr. Olympia and not showing up anywhere, not on social media, not on any events, and finally when it seemed like he was gonna do this guest posing, because he posted these uh, couple of shots where he looked shredded, we all thought he's gonna be there, he again didn't appear, and it caused a lot of heat, a lot of people called him out for it, uh, called him out that he's uh, way too passive, not active enough to be the Mr. Olympia, to be a representation for all bodybuilding, and being lazy up until now, like on social media and other events, not showing up anywhere, not uh, making any training videos, nothing, there is no excuse for that, I believe that's pure laziness, but this particularly, Pittsburgh Pro guest posing. I honestly believe he wanted to be there, but he couldn't make it for some reason. He looked really good in these photos. I believe he was prepping for this guest posing. I think he wanted to represent himself and bodybuilding in the best light possible. It really looks like he tried hard, but for whatever reason, he didn't make it. So basically, we don't really have an answer to the question uh, of why he didn't show up and why did he go MIA for that uh, time after Pittsburgh until now. What happened to him, we still don't know. We just got an apology. And you would probably think if anybody knew what happened, that would be Dennis James. But no, this guy also... Everybody, yeah, has, everybody has some stories, you know, and I'm trying to... And I'm going through the internet to find out what happened because I don't even know. <laughs> I seriously don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I was there to support him because you know we we agreed that I'll come to Pittsburgh to help him out. I was there. <laughs> He's the one that didn't show up. He did. A, so, he did. A, he did a call me. Or he missed his flight. Listen, I, I'm all. All I know is that. He, you know he he he's okay supposedly so he's not i haven't spoken to him i i, I reached out a couple of times 
I, he didn't respond and, and I didn't hear nothing back. So uh, I'm still waiting to, to hear from him to find out what really happened. So not even Dennis James knew where he was, what was going on. He knew that he was okay, and apparently he is okay. He made this apology video. Hopefully everything is actually fine. I guess it's simply something personal that he cannot disclose. And I hope he's going to continue training and actually competing and maybe be more active on social media before the Mr. Olympia. But I hope we're going to see him back on that stage this year. Hopefully it is not something that's going to prevent him from competing again this year. Oh, and guys, if you have some joint issues, here is your solution. Vintage Band by the Old School Labs. Uh, so basically this is a combination of so many great ingredients like magnesium, calcium, glucosamine and many others as you can see right here. So guys, if you want to try this product out and you want to support me and my channel, click on the link in the description of this video and use the code EVEN to get a 12% discount on this amazing product, basically a combination of all natural ingredients that will help your joints. All right, the next thing I wanted to talk about is, yes, finally, we will see Petr Klancir on that stage. I see many of you are confused how to pronounce his name, so it's not Petar, uh, it's not Peter, it's Petar, and his last name is Klancir. So you can try to remember it, but uh, Peter Klancir also works, I guess. Uh, so finally, he got his visa, and he will be competing at the California Pro stage uh, this weekend. So we're going to see him against Charles Griffin. Can he win that show? Well, his main competition is obviously Charles Griffin. And can he beat this guy? Well, we won't know until we see them both on stage. But as far as structure, Petter has an amazing, amazing structure. He looks like an absolute monster as well. He's really massive and he does have pretty small waist and very complete build. I just don't know if he's going to be as conditioned as Charles. That's basically the only thing. I do know that he has symmetry, proportions, balance, that he's very complete, very muscular. Like He doesn't pretty much lack anything aside from uh, that, that crazy crisp condition that we haven't really seen from Petter before. But maybe this time around he will actually bring it. And if he does, he's going to be really dangerous and he might very well win this California Pro and qualify for the Mr. Olympia. I would love to see that happen. What do you guys think? Don't look at the name. Can you recognize these glutes? I'm sure you cannot, because this is Hassan Mustafa, and it looks like he finally got those glutes shredded. I don't think his glutes were ever this lean, and he's actually at three and a half weeks out of Puerto Rico, bro. And also then Orlando, bro, he's gonna do those two shows. So finally, it looks like he's bringing it. Not just the glutes, but also like, look at the back. Like He's starting to look really dry. So something is clicking. I don't know what was wrong last year, but for some reason he wasn't able to really bring the conditioning. He was basically competing in guest posing uh, conditioning, but now he is getting shredded. And I've been following his progress closely since his last off season. I was watching his off season, and I think he started his prep at like 12 weeks out. And I was watching him getting shredded, and I thought. Well, he looks good for 12 weeks out, he looks good for 10 weeks out, he looks great for 8 weeks out. I just hope he's going to keep getting leaner and leaner. Hopefully there is more room to actually to make changes, you know. Hopefully he is not uh, like at, uh, I don't know, 800 calories right now and 5 hours of cardio. But he keeps proving that there is more room. And there is more room needed. He is not still in contest shape. But in those 3.5 weeks, he will be spot on. And it's going to be really exciting to see Hassan Mustafa actually shredded for once. Because this guy is an absolute monster as far as size. And you're going to see that on stage, especially now, if, if he actually gets shredded. And if he does that, I predict him winning, of course. Winning Puerto Rico Pro and also Orlando. I think this guy has so much mass that if he comes conditioned he, and, and also he picks properly, he's going to be undeniable. He's going to destroy everybody. If he is shredded, the only question is really how well will he do at the Mr. Olympia and can he crack the finals? Can he be in top 5 or top 6? What do you guys think? I think this guy can do that. If he's on, if he's really spot on, it's going to be really hard for anybody to beat him. Look at this freaking monster. 
But then we also have an update of fourth place, Mr. Olympia finisher Hunter Labrada, who looks really nuts right now. And now especially that split in his biceps is making this physique look so much more impressive. But overall he's really lean for off-season shape. I don't know why he maintained this kind of conditioning throughout the entire off-season. From what I gathered, basically, when he was talking about his plans, his goal is not to grow anymore. He just wants to work on maturity, like details, and maybe improving his back. For sure, he definitely needs to improve that back, but he doesn't want to grow anymore because he's scared that if he keeps pushing, he's going to grow the waist. And if his waistline grows anymore, it's going to throw the balance of his physique completely, and it's not going to look the same, it's not going to look as big. So I think it's the right play. I just hope his back is going to respond. To grow his back, he needs to punish it, but he still needs to feed it. And it looks like he's not really force-feeding himself, so if he didn't grow that back uh, at this point, he probably won't make too much progress unless he's really force-feeding himself. But even small detail uh, changes are going to affect the look of his entire physique and he's going to look better on that day for sure. But from the front, this front double bicep looks really impressive. But I don't think I see him moving up at the Mr. Olympia from that fourth spot. I think it's going to be a success just staying there, but that's going to be really tough. He does look great right now, but that's the problem. He shouldn't look this good half a year out of Mr. Olympia. He should be looking a little bit more chubby and that would tell us that he's eating enough and that he is actually making progress like some of the other guys. Which other guys, you're wondering? Well, the guy that Hunter was able to beat last year by one spot, Nick Walker, uh, let's say his biggest rival, and Nick is also staying pretty lean, but obviously not as lean as Hunter, as we saw at that yes posing at Pittsburgh, bro. Nick is definitely not fat, I mean, he's just a little bit watery, but uh, he's definitely not in condition as Hunter Obrada. Apparently, he's obviously, I mean, he's eating more food, and I think he's making more progress. I think he looks bigger than the previous offseason, while Hunter looks pretty much the same like last year's offseason. The only thing I'm worried about as far as Nick is that without Matt Jensen, he's going to push his arms to be really, really uh, freaky as they can be. And I think Matt was holding him back because, you know, guys, everybody wants bigger arms. It's, it's really an impressive show me body part. But when you have a physique like this, when arms are really this dominant, they can make his, for example, his chest. And Nick's weak point is his chest look smaller. And Matt had that under control. I just really hope that uh, uh, Nick's new coach will have that in mind as well. And that Nick will actually listen. That he won't do anything uh, on his own. Like train his arms too hard. Because it looks like his arms grew a little bit. Maybe he trained them before he took this photo. I don't know. Maybe I'm making a mistake. And I think his chest did improve. I think his chest did grow. And I do think he improved his legs too. And not hamstrings, his hamstrings were like insane last year, but his outer head, his lateral head uh, of his quadricep, the, 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 the sweep area needed to be bigger, uh, and I think he improved that, and uh, also the chest. So it really looks like Nick is making progress, and he never really shows his back. On a podcast with Fuad, Fuad said that if somebody doesn't show his back in their progress photos, it means that they have no back. So maybe Nick felt <laughs> called out by that, and now he started posting more back shots, and it's not really looking that impressive. And, you know, back is that kind of a body part, it doesn't really look that good in the offseason, it only starts to show how much progress you made when you get shredded. Of course, under a great lighting and with a great pump, side chest, most muscular, and that kind of poses will look better, but Nick is not afraid to show his back in the back a double bicep as well, and as you can see, uh, it looks good, and I'm, and I'm sure that he's making progress. I don't know if I can really see some crazy changes, but I have no doubt that this guy is a workhorse and that he's doing whatever it takes and that he's training properly. And as soon as he gets shredded, we will see how much progress he actually made. And I think he's going to jump a few spots this year. At this point, just staying in top 5 is a really huge success. Making a leap here against like Hadi, Bonak. Bonak, he beat Bonak last year, but Bonak improved again. 
he's back at what he was before uh, beating Brandon Curry, Big Ramy. That's gonna be really tough. I can see him beating Hunter Labrada and not losing to the other guys out of that top five. Maybe not William Bonac, we'll see. But, you know, making a leap this year, that's going to be insanely hard. And if he does that, that's gonna be absolutely amazing. So guys, whatever you think, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.